the kingdom without the kings a kingdom which has no king is of course not a kingdom and that kingdom cannot reign since there is no king because there are kings that cause the kingdom to reign it's the, it's the human the human ruler who cause a kingdom to reign if you have a very powerful kingdom and there is no powerful ruler there won't be anything like powerful kingdom there should be the, 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 it's the ruler that makes the kingdom powerful so when we look through the world and the history of the world we find people who have ruled over nations as kings or as presidents and they have a history during their rule what they did is still their rulership the history of them still linger in the nations what they did what this king what this president did because when you go into a territory or what we call domain or dom a dominance of a place or a dominion of a place that is established that is there that realm there is called the domain but there should be the king before you can call it a kingdom a, a, a domain without the king is not a kingdom even though the dominion is there if there is no ruler for example in Genesis 1 verse 26 to 28 we find out that God created the man that he should govern here on earth since the man failed that dominion which God gave to the man could not materialize and what happened was even disastrous death and destruction poverty oppression broken heartedness came as a result so if there is a kingdom established by God for the people and the people are not governing there are these are the kings because God created all human beings to have dominion on earth so he gave them the man and the woman they should have dominion on earth. What turned out to be? What turned out was that is that neither the man nor the woman had dominion. That the man even started to have dominion over the woman. Meanwhile, the two of them were given dominion. They were deceived by Satan to rather try to uh, exercise powers over themselves. That is why when any human being is exercising power or oppressing any other human being it is not godly if you have rulers who are oppressing the others like we have maybe authoritarian rules that is found in communist nations people say their, their system is best why because nobody can speak the democracies of the west is bad why because Everybody can choose. Even people can decide whether they marry a man. With a man can decide to marry a man. A woman can decide to marry a woman. I mean, why should somebody's problem, somebody's choice, if it is not harmful to you, why should it become your worry? Everybody should have his or her freedom. And we say, oh, but too much freedom is bad. Yes, I understand that. Because people will choose things which you may not like. That is why you say it's bad. But once you are not affected or afflicted by the choices, why should you worry? The person is not armed robber. He is not a bandit. He is not a kidnapper. He is not a terrorist. It is his choice. He is not, you see, what is wrong is when it is taught in a classroom and imposed upon people. That is wrong. 
because then they are imposing it on others. But if they will stay in their corner and practice it, why should the states, people who are godly, why should they worry? But they can impose themselves in the society when they are not kings, godly kings ruling. The godly kings will not make a law that we don't want this. These people should be killed or died. No. What the godly kings will do is to make sure that there is no oppression. There is no deception. There is no... Well, when we say godliness, godliness, it comes with contempt. They will be satisfied with what you have. Godliness doesn't mean that or the form of holiness that is being described. People describe holiness in the righteousness of God without even understanding it. Because in the city called Sodom and Gomorrah, who were the great example of homosexuality and things that are done even today, it was not the people's sin. It was the absence of just 10 righteous people that caused the nation that two cities to be destroyed. Try to study your scriptures very well so you can understand things and not just follow anything. And in Genesis 19, or when it became from Genesis 18 to Genesis 19, where the cities were destroyed, there was the need for only 10 righteous people in the nation. So if you can convince people to be, just few people to be righteous in the nation, God is ready to forgive every sin there. Because God has a covenant with the people of the world. He made a covenant with Christ. It's not the people who ratify the covenant, but the Christ is the one who ratify the covenant because Christ become now the Father. Now, if in that covenant of Christ, God has said he will not even remember the unrighteousness of the people and their sins and iniquity, he will not remember them. He will not remember their sins. He will be merciful to the unrighteous deeds and their sins and iniquities, he will not remember. So when he said the new covenant, he has made the first old. It is in that first covenant or the old covenant which God made with Moses, that we have something like, if you fornicate, if you become lustful, you have to die. If you cannot serve God, sacrifice, bring ordinances, God will punish you and curse you. That was in the old covenant. But in the covenant of Christ, God is saying that he will not remember the sins and iniquities of the people. So he has made the first old. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6 to 13. Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 1 to 17. So people have to serve God in the faith of that second or the new covenant. And that old covenant has nothing to do with that faith of the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. And Galatians 3, verse 12. That old covenant is called the law. And the new covenant is called the grace of God. There are differences. So, so when people are serving the old covenant, that is how they can be punished by God and be destroyed. But if there are people who are serving the new covenant, these people cannot be destroyed. Because God has vowed in that covenant that he will not remember their sins and iniquities. And he will be merciful to the unrighteous deeds. So it is you who is supposed to bring this righteousness of God to the world. But if you sit in your churches and you are preaching the old covenant, you are preaching Moses, you are preaching the prophet, you are preaching the Psalms, you are preaching the tithes, the first fruits, the sacrificial offering, you are preaching the anointing oil. How do you then say that God should even save you? Because what you are doing 
Any sin you commit will be punished. For example, in Luke chapter 1, we saw that there was a high place called Sakalia, the father of John the Baptist. And then we saw a lady called Mary, the mother of Jesus. An angel, the same angel called Gabriel, came to the two of them. The chief priest was worshipping Moses, Mosaic laws, the old covenant. He was the chief priest of that covenant. And Mary was just somebody, who, the greetings that the angel greeted the woman was, you have found favor with God. Favor, grace of God. The two of them asked the same question. What Zechariah asked the, pro, the angel when he told him that his wife, who was very old, called Elizabeth, who has never even conceived in her life, and very old woman like Sarah, was going to conceive and give birth a son. The man, the chief police, asked the angel, how could this be? You know we are very old. He is a human being with no understanding of divine things. Does he know how faith works? So he won't just answer. The angel got angry and struck him, smit him with damp, so the man could not talk again. So the wife gave birth. Then he just released his tongue. He came to Mary. This same angel came to Mary and told her that you are going to conceive. And then he said, I'm not married. I've not gone to my husband yet. So how could I be co conceived today, as you are talking about? He said, oh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So he who will be conceived in your womb will be called the Holy One. And this will be his name, Christ, the Anointed One. It's come to come from the Holy Spirit. It's simple understanding. But he punished Zechariah. Why? Because he was under the law. So if anybody is putting you under the law, know that you are going to be punished. Any little mistake you do. That is how people are going to hell. If you are under the grace, Romans 6.14 is saying that you can't be dominion, be dominated by sin. Since you are not under the law. Because Apostle Paul is playing in Romans chapter 7, from verse 7 to 11, that it is the law that makes people cause, become sinners. Romans chapter 7, from verse 7 to 11. So if you don't have this understanding, somebody will come with anointing oil to teach you to use it. Somebody will come with tight to teach you to follow it. And in doing that, then be make, make sure that you don't commit any sin, even in your mind. Because that will cause Satan to destroy you because God will give you up. That's what Satan is using to deceive people who believe in Christ. And that's why they are suffering. Because as many of people who are just practicing any work of the law is under curse. And that person cannot receive any grace from God. Galatians 3 verse 10. Galatians 5 verse 4. So you have to give this understanding. Galatians 3 verse 10. And you can't receive any miracle from the Holy Spirit. Galatians 3 verse 5. Galatians 3 verse 5. He who work, miracle, work give you the spirit and work miracles is taught by the rest of the law. It's by hearing the faith of the gospel. So these are something you're supposed to know. But we are talking about the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God can reign. And we are saying that it requires a king for a kingdom to reign. And now in Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 is saying that Christ has made you a king and a priest. Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. God has made you a king and a priest. Then Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. He said, taking you from the nations, the candles, the languages, so that you will govern here on earth. Jesus came. In Luke chapter 11, verse 20 to 22. Look at 11, from verse 20 to 22. Say, so if you see me casting out the devils with the finger of God, 
And that Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, 29, he said, with the Holy Spirit, that's who he called the finger of God. If you see me casting out the, the, the therefore the kingdom of God, then you know that the kingdom of God is come on earth. That's the sign that the kingdom of God is come on earth. For if a strong man keep his palace, we're talking about Satan keeping his palace, that Satan is a king. A strong man, a king, keep his palace. If someone stronger than him, he Jesus, the stronger man. That's why he described in 1 John 4, verse 4, that greater is he who is in you, Christ, the greater one. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 27. Romans 8, 11. If Christ is in you, uh, for, for, sorry, Romans 8, 10. If Christ is in you, Colossians 1, 27, Christ is in you. So in 1 John 4, verse 4 says, Little children, you have overcome them, for greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So if the greater come upon the great one, he defeated him, crack him, destroy him, and takes over all his power. That's what Jesus was saying. So Jesus came, and look at what he preached. He started to preach the gospel concerning the kingdom of God. And telling the people to repent and believe the gospel. Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. Why the gospel? Because the gospel gave birth to sons of God who become the kings. Apostle Peter said in Peter 1, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 and 25. That you are born again by that incorruptible word, the word of God who is forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached to you. So Jesus sent into this world, to these candles, to these languages, to these nations, go and preach the gospel to them. Because God was looking for kings, sons of God, who become hearers of God and join hearers with Christ. Kings, sons of God, to govern the kingdom who Jesus has set up. Because Daniel 2 verse 44 says that, in the days of the nations, where you don't have now any kingdom, the last kingdom called the Iron Kingdom was the Roman King Empire. It's collapsed. Now the nations, we have nations, united nations. They are now existing. In the days of this nation, shall the God of heaven establish his kingdom and it will crack down all the kingdoms and all the nations and govern so Jesus has set the kingdom and the kingdom is governed. But where are the kings? This will come from those who believe in the gospel to become the sons. And if they are not deceived and made to be worshipping in temples, singing chorus and hallelujah songs, and following miracles, signs and wonders and prophecies, then they will govern. So if anybody is asking where is the kingdom of God, the question should be, where are the kings? The kingdom of God is on earth. But if there are no kings, there will be no governance of that kingdom. So we have to ask the question, where are the kings? And we say, go to the churches. They are following miracles, signs and wonders. They want cars, they want buildings, they want money, they want marriages, they want visas. They are worshipping the covenant that makes them sinners. They are being put under Ten Commandments, under tithes, under uh, first fruit, under sacrifices, under anointing oil. They are being deceived. So when you are asking where is the kingdom of God, the question should be, where are the kings? Because if you enter into a place like, let's say United States, or your country, maybe in Europe, Maybe in Nigeria, maybe in Ghana, maybe in Sudan, maybe in Iraq, maybe China, maybe Russia, maybe Caribbean, maybe Argentina, maybe Brazil. And things are going on wrong. Who, who do you blame? You ask, where is the government? Is there a government in this place? That's what you ask. Yes, the country exists. There's a country called United States. Germany exists. There is France. There is Nigeria, there is Togo, there is Ghana, there is South Africa, there is China, there is Russia, there is Iraq, there is South America. 
whatever. So they are there. But if things are wrong and nothing is working there, it's the government we search for. Who is the government of this land? When people don't have food to eat. I see one lady who was accusing and abusing. We can't continue like this. We don't even have food to eat. We can't even buy palm oil. This government, either you change or we, we deal with you. Who is he blaming? The government. He's not blaming the nation. He's blaming the government. Oh, Nigeria. We are bandits. Armed robbers. Kidnappers. Terrorists. We don't have peace. We can't even go out. We don't have electricity. We don't have food to eat. Who do you blame? The government. Is it Nigeria? No, the government. The same way, if you are blaming anybody, if you want questions, if your question is to find out where the kingdom of God is, where there's no kingdom of God, your question should rather be where are the kings? Because they are the ones who are supposed to govern. If there's no king, the kingdom will be there. There won't be any governance. There won't be any writing. Because the kings make, put things in order. So Apostle Paul said, I have taught therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, be made for all men, for the kings, that's the presidents. Today we don't have kings, because there are no kingdoms. We have nations. So the rulers, the post in authority, pray for them, so that there will be quietness, peaceable life, There'll be godliness, there'll be honesty. For this is acceptable in the sight of God, who want all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. That of the one God, and the mediator, the Lord Jesus, who gave himself for us. And who is supposed to do this supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks? The sons of God, their words, their mouth. As I said, they will have rod in their mouth. They will be given seven spirits who Apostle John saw them as seven eyes of God, seven lamps of God, reaching to the four, from verse six, coming. What Apostle John saw? Now, these people, he said, they will be rod in their mouth. They will smit the earth and judge and slay the wicked. But you say, oh, how would these people slay? How would they kill? By their mouth. They will appoint rulers. That's why I said pray for kings and people in authority. They will appoint rulers by their prayers. So their thanksgiving, their supplication, their prayers, their intercession. For all men, for the kings and the post authority. We to appoint for men who will put things in order. They will pray for them. So if in your country, the countries of the world, if in other states, if in Russia, if in China, North Korea, in Iran, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Sudan, whoever, if you are not praying for leaders who are godly, who would take the rod to punish evil doers, slay them, eliminate them, if they don't kill the bandits, they don't kill the armed robbers, they don't kill the kidnappers, kidnappers, they don't kill those who are the terrorists. Imagine, for example, if ISSI, what they call them, ISIS, those things who were ransacking everything in Iraq, in Syria, and everywhere, and so United States, if the Allied forces did not mount firepower against them and kill all of them, today nobody will have even who have been deep stay in this world because these terrorists will occupy everywhere everywhere you go they will be bombing everywhere they came they were bombing everywhere in Europe until all of them were wiped up by organized governments so if you sit there for example oh Donald Trump wants to be a president oh Joe Biden we don't like it <laughs> okay <laughs> then just sit down and then you will be supporting and mumbling and discussing Oh, when will Nigeria be better? It will never be better if you are silent. Because you are supposed to pray for a decent government to come who has that power. And you should empower the government. Remember, Elijah was given the power 
to anoint king over Syria, king over Israel, and a prophet to deal with the wickedness and destroy them and kill them with a sword. Yes, Elijah was given that. Now Jesus is saying that you are greater than Elijah, the least among you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, verse 14. The little children have overcome these evils. So you are the king, you. If you are, do not doing your job, don't expect any good ruler to come out from the United States to deal with the things. And you are attacking the nation. That's your problem. Nigeria is bad. United States is bad. Europe is bad. Germany is not good. Ghana is not good. No. Now, if you are attacking the system, you are not solving any problem. You're supposed to pray against the bad ruler, pray to anoint a good ruler to solve the problem, to deal with them. If you think the government there has failed, the government is not eliminating the bandits. He's not eliminating the terrorists. He's even one of the terrorist leaders. He's not eliminating the kidnappers. He's not eliminating the armed robbers. With firepower, using the military and the police to wipe them off, to kill all of them away, so that there'll be peace in the country. There's no way there'll be peace there. So your argument, your disputing, and you're trying to make the country look very bad. Nigeria is very bad. United States is very bad. It does not solve any pr problem. Trying to listen to YouTube and TikTok will not solve any problem. Because you are the one to do that. If there are no kings, there can't be any kingdom. There can't be any order in the kingdom. Because the king, they are in the first place, there are no kings. Go to Sudan. They don't have any ruler. So everybody does what they want. Go to Libya. There's no ruler there. Everybody does what they want. And if you go to some places like North Korea, the ruler is also oppressing everybody there. There's no freedom. So the freedom is not good. Yes. God gives freedom. He called liberty. So let the people have their liberty. That's the godly rule. And then those who are evil, God knows how to deal with them through the people you set up there. Set rulers of the nations. Just as Elijah did. Set a ruler over nations. Set a ruler in the United States. Set a ruler of the European nations. Set a ruler over Nigeria. Set a ruler over Ghana. And let him take over. And doing that, you are casting down the evil ruler. You are removing power from their hands. You are removing wealth and riches from their hands. You have to face them out. The whole earth is the kingdom of God. The whole earth. Daniel 2.44, the kingdom of God is ruling in this age. So anything that is not of God should be outside the kingdom. Cast them out. If you cast them out, because now when you are a king of the kingdom, you make sure that anything that is evil should not stay in the kingdom or they are subdued in the kingdom by the power of the rod in your mouth. When you do that, then there will be peace here on earth. Then we look at the steps towards when this thing will happen, when the whole kingdom will now become the kingdom of God. Right now, it is you the next Christ, when Christ appears in the chapter 20, you see Christ. His term will, the term will come to rule. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 24 to 28, you see that now he will hand everything to God. So look at the steps. Now you are the one to govern. Then Christ will come to govern. Then God will take over everything. But when you fail and waiting for Christ to come, then you are going to be brave. So you have to work out your salvation. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10 to 15. Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10 to 15. At the name of Jesus, you have to subdue things now. And let all things conform to Christ. So God is working in you. So stop that mumbling and disputing so that you will not be blameless. But as you will not be brave, so that you become brameless, harmless, and the a godly son of God who shine in this light as light as light. It's now our turn. We are now to govern before Christ returns. Let this truth be in you and stop 
worshiping, sitting in the church room and worshiping and sitting in the nation and complaining. May God give you understanding. Amen.